Right, hello everybody. Um, so we're gonna slightly change. Um, I've so enjoyed listening to everybody's talk so far this morning um, and hearing and reflecting back on my own journey about what it was like at the very beginning when everything is new and everything is exciting and your first proposal is gonna change the world. Um, and what I'm gonna share with you today is actually that never changes. And actually, even more than that, pretty much every single one of you said um, things change, you have to rewrite your question, that also doesn't change. And things don't go to plan. So similarly, when I put in my request for funding, I had all these grand and glorious plans. I was going to publish two papers, I was going to go off to Norway to visit Stavanger, um, then they have a group there that's doing research that would follow really nicely on from my own PhD research to kind of learn how they did it, how they developed an intervention, things like that. To then go ahead and inform the next big step and the big application of being a postdoctoral fellowship at the NIHR. So that was the plan. My Gantt chart would have been spotted on so many tables. <laughs> However, <laughs> it all went a bit. Um, so, the first hitch that I came across um, was I had to delay things. So when you put in your application for the enhancement level, they talk about how you have to be either finished your PhD or about to finish your PhD, and I was like, easy! I actually handed my PhD in by the time that I'd applied for this funding back in March. I was like, what have you done? All I have to do in June is actually do my viva. That'll be sorted, no problem, it'll be done. Um, and the reality was, viva went fine, passed, no problem, but the process of finishing a PhD is so much longer and so much more complicated than anybody tells you. They don't warn you about this process. So it took basically until in June, viva done, congratulations, you passed, you're now a doctor. Didn't actually get my certificate until October. <laughs> because of the stages and the processes and the continued reviews and things. And then it wasn't until December until I actually graduated. So because of that, I put in a deferral because I didn't want to use that enhancement time to finish the PhD. So we put it on pause. So I finally got started and I was like, yes, let's get this paper in. Submitted interview result paper one, immediately rejected. Now the background to that is the journal I went to, I was like, they'll definitely publish it. Because they published my protocol, they published my survey results paper, so they're definitely going to publish my interview results, and they're like, no. <laughs> so I had to rephrase it, rewrite it, put it into the next one. The theory paper is on a much more rocky journey, and it's been rejected twice, and is now currently under peer review for the third time. So hopefully, we'll get the paper, the second paper in and done. The next thing that went according to plan was my trip to Norway. Um, it did get delayed. At the end of August, I finally got to go and I visited the pro health group at the University of Stavanger. Um, and they were very supportive in it as well. So they helped with um, my accommodation costs and things. And it was brilliant because it was a really great experience to sit with other researchers who similarly are looking at similar things. So burden of treatment, what is the work that we as clinicians are asking patients to do. How does it impact on them? How does it impact on how they feel about the world and, and whatnot? So getting to sit and share with them my results. But I think more importantly for me is actually looking at, they did a similar project and they finished about a year ahead of me and they're now a couple of stages further on taking that information and converting it into a doable nurse-led digital intervention for the patient population that I'm most interested in heart failure. So it was about sitting with them as well and talking to them about how they went through that process, how they got the funding, how they partnered with the digital company to start to inform my thinking about how I would move my own work forward. So that was brilliant. Got home from that and then got a phone call. Now, for people who don't really know me, I've actually been struggling with quite a lot of hip pain for quite a long time. Um, and so when I got the phone call, I was actually really excited, even though it would mean another massive delay. <laughs> so October 24th, 
Uh, but a week and a half before that, I picked up my phone, they're like, hello, we're at the cinema. Hey. And they're like, we have an appointment for you. And I was like, that's quite curious, because I wasn't expecting this until April of next year. Um, so they got me in on a cancellation slot, and I then have been since October to pretty much two weeks ago, three weeks ago, um, been playing this game <laughs> for one week. Um, so I, everything just stopped. In my head, I thought, oh, I'm going to be home, I'm going to be all sick, there's going to be nothing wrong with my brain, I can sit and do work. Turns out hip replacement is fairly major surgery. So now that I'm moving again, take two, um, I've just finished rewriting that theory paper for the third time. Um, and it's been submitted to a journal, and I actually like messaged Allison uh, a couple of days ago and I was like, it finally made it to peer review. <laughs> <laughs> this is a major battle with that paper. And I've also submitted a abstract based on some data that I haven't published yet from my PhD to a um, cardiovascular nurses allied health professional research um, conference later this year in Scotland, which should be quite good. The other thing that has changed slightly is my plans for the future. So. I had to drop everything. And one of the things that Alison actually hinted about, and I shared all of my secrets with you all, is that that fellowship application, that postdoctoral fellowship application, is kind of more not just about your project and your idea and what you're going to build through it, but it's about the team who are around you. And that really makes you really consider what am I doing and what is the expertise that I need and where do I need to go to get that expertise. So I'm on a real journey of trying to better understand the strategic outlay of healthcare services around this population in long-term conditions as well as how future alterations and how research is being done, how our healthcare groups are being formulated, how that might all affect that so that it will fit seamlessly into all that strategic direction rather than me fighting against it and trying to just get it done. Um, and the other big future plan is that I need to be apart from, throughout my whole PhD, I was apart from Southampton and I was apart from our fitness group and whatnot, just a nature of lots of complicated factors and the value that being a part of this sort of group is so large and i've seen that now um, in so many different ways throughout my phd and even in the last like couple of months as this enhancement in her in intern so it's really to push hard to integrate in with the arc and all of the resources and the support that are available there to move things forward so quickly Lessons learned. Don't beat yourselves up that it hasn't gone to plan. Um, even at the stage I'm at, which probably thinking about where you want to go and doing PCAS and then PhDs, it probably seems a long way down the road. You're like, oh, I'll know what I'm doing then. Um, it's build flexibility into your plans. Allow for those babies to be born. Allow for surgeries to happen. Allow for you having to rewrite your research question. 450 on time and it will build a more robust project but it will build a more sustainable view as well and I think it's something not to beat yourself up about and um, Sandra who's not here because she's in Portugal she wrote a blog about this that's on the ARC website that I really recommend you pay read and she said something in there that has really hit home to me your gap chart that we all have to do for every single application you put in doesn't allow for life. So allow for life within your research. Thank you.